Because you are kind. You are kind. <laughs> you Sometimes. Are. Yeah. Sometimes. We got into a fight last night. Oh, no. Can yeah. What? <laughs> okay, so All one right, thing guys. about... <laughs> Welcome to therapy. She <laughs> won't dwell the for about? weeks when we get into a fight. I do. I think about She's it. I'll, yeah. I hate fighting with anybody, but especially her. I love her. Yeah. We we got into not a fight. I mean, we get in, we get like annoyed with each other. <laughs> we got annoyed with each it's other. Like real sisters. Oh, we oh, spend yeah. twenty four hours we're like a together? married couple. No, we live two minutes away from each okay. other. But we're always at each other's house anyways. So we get into this little thing in the middle of the podcast. And then we go out. Into oh, you fight in the middle in of the, the podcast? Middle, right, it was before my we were doing it the was my right before we were doing the salvation call. No I was, way. Was, the it's enemy so after our souls every time we do the salvation <laughs> prayer. I'm telling you, we have major spiritual warfare no every way. time we're doing the salvation yeah. call. Yeah. So we leave. We don't say anything. We walk out. And then we go to the bathroom. And Ari just, she starts. And she's like, what? What's wrong? And I'm like, try to not do it right <laughs> Then and there and then we have like a little tussle we get in the car it goes on for a second we don't talk the whole way i drop her <laughs> off and i'm expecting her to be like i love you you know we always do that yeah, yeah. she takes off her seat belt fifth like 10 minutes before we're even at her house oh you're so pissed. she takes it She's off pissed. early yeah you know what she says to me what'd you say she says <laughs> <laughs> she goes I go, I don't want to fight with you like this. She goes, well, if I'm being honest, I don't know what version of Ariel I'm going to get. And I look at <laughs> oh, her, I'm done with you. <laughs> I, I didn't cut, mean it like that. Like you ain't cutthroat, like dude. Bipolar. No, no, no. Hey, no punches below the belt. <laughs> okay. That's crazy. That was not, that's so fair. <laughs> Do you think I'm a bipolar? <laughs> no, I don't. No, but any, she knows that I don't mean it like that. But then I thought she, we're going to be cool. And then she gets out of the car, slams the door, walks inside. I'm heartbroken, truly devastated. <laughs> okay. And I'm like, what do I do right now? I don't know what to do. I go get a salad, eat. So I was in a little bit of a better a mood. <laughs> so you guys are hangry is the issue. Probably. I call her and I'm like, if she doesn't answer right now, my whole world will come crashing down. She answers and she's like, hey. When my phone All sweet? Yeah. It, when my phone rang, I was like, yes. I know. It was, hello? You, you said I won. Oh, is that what it was? I won. <laughs> she, she, was, she wanted to call me and I wanted to call her. And this is just a lesson in putting your ego down and saying <laughs> She's sorry first. Right now. <laughs> really? God says God that you must says. lay down your own life for your brother. Come on, somebody. Come on, Come on somebody. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so whose fault was it? No, oh, that was a test. You no, failed. It, was, it was my fault. It was my fault. No, it was mine too. I'm I didn't understand I a part of the Bible and I got embarrassed. That's what happened. Uh, it happens. You're making everyone feel bad for it you happens. right now. Now you're gaslighting Angela She's right now. She's gaslighting you so hard. <laughs> this <laughs> is so good. She she goes, me look she goes so I didn't feel a little bit. I didn't understand the Bible and I felt dumb because of somebody. And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kaden. Hi, Kaden. I think we see the issue. <laughs> Just kidding. Kaden. Let's let's podcast. Yeah? Yes. All right. I feel like was that recording? Because that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we really have to talk so about good. this whole fighting. Yeah, do we need to get to the bottom of this? <laughs> no. Should no. we just like she's no. brought it up seven look, times? Look at Ari today. in the eyes. Yes. Look at Angela in the eyes. Say I forgive you. I forgive you. Say I forgive you. I forgive you. This is the only part in our no, relationship, no, 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 though, that I wear the pants. What? <laughs> say, they say I forgive you. I forgive their, you. Like, and a I butt love after you. That. You're my world. You're my there world. you go. We love each other so much. We Praise never God fight. for redemption. Thank you, Jesus. Guys, Girls Gone Bible almost broke up on my podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's crazy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the show. Um, today's episode's really fun. We got some pretty awesome guests here with us today. But before we jump in, obviously, as always, shout out Life Audio. Go ahead and go to lifeaudio.com to check out all the things they're doing, other podcasts. None are as good as this one, but you can try and find one. Um, and then also, shout out You and Me Media. We love you. Thank you so much for all you're doing. Courtney just left. She just walked out. RIP, I'm by myself, and hopefully everything goes well, because if not, we're screwed. Today we have the one and the only Girls Gone Bible in the building, which Aww. is crazy. Um, but Angela, Ari, thanks for coming in, guys. Thank thanks, you. Kaden. So good to have you guys here. I feel like we've been friends for years. I know. It feels we right. We truly have. It feels like we've been friends for a long time. Yeah. We just met five minutes That's ago. That's how you know yeah. it's like God is, is involved. I, I love it. I had a guest on today that we had been texting him and I. Shout out Miles. We've been texting for like, I don't know, a month or two. And finally, like, locked down a day and came in, and it was like family. Like, yeah, he brought his manager. That. It was like family. 
we were like, are we, are we brothers? Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And it's that. just like the Lord's here. So guys, thanks for coming. I'm so stoked for thanks today. For like you. very thanks excited. for having us. We love watching what you do. I told Ari said yeah. it to you earlier, but before we, I, I even knew that we were going to come on here because you, you guys were talking. She sent me her profile and I was like, I've literally just been looking at his stuff today. That's insane. It yeah. really is. That is so crazy. We I love can see what you the Holy Spirit when you speak. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's like the greatest compliment I think I could mm -hmm. ever get in my life. Thank you. Yeah. That means You're the world amazing. to me. That just shook me up a little bit. But <laughs> um, I could say the same about you guys because I feel like I can't outrun you guys right now. Like I pull up my phone. I'm so sorry. I pull up my phone. I pull up my phone. It's like it's like phone. It's like girls gone Bible. I'm like, oh sick, love them. And then it's like girls gone Bible. Oh sick. And it's like a friend repost girls gone Bible. I'm like sick. And then it's like, oh cool. I wonder what Maddie and Jean are up to. Oh, girls gone Bible. And then I'm with my agent. Girls gone Bible. I'm like, what's going on? I can't. So I'm like, I got to get these girls on the pod because I'm so excited to hear so everything's awesome. been going on. It feels like I feel like I just learned a little bit, but it feels like the last six months of your life we've seen. I feel like everyone has gotten to see like God just do something miraculous with how he is using you guys to reach so many people. Like yeah. I checked today. You guys are like number seven on, on iTunes for like podcasts wow, like I didn't even that's see that. crazy wow. that's unreal and mm -hmm. like you only launched it six months ago you guys just yeah, told me yeah, yeah. so it's really cool to see what you guys are doing and I feel like from the outside looking in and then getting to talk to some friends and people that know you guys it mm -hmm. just sounds like two girls that allowed the Holy Spirit to light them on fire mm -hmm. and then they just go okay world like watch me burn and people are coming from all over to be like I gotta what are the, what's going on here like yeah. I gotta figure out what these girls are doing because I need a part of this wow. And it's really special to see. So thanks for coming on, guys. It means the world. Thank you. That is the nicest thing I know. Thing I'm anyone's like, ever said. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate nice. that. Absolutely. Yeah, we just, we, it's been only six months, which is crazy because it feels like it's, it feels like it just started yesterday and it feels like it's been forever. I don't yeah. even remember life before this and so much has happened mm -hmm. outside of us and within us. Like, mm -hmm. it's so funny what God has done in our lives. It's, it's the podcast has been like the biggest blessing of our lives because it's forced us to rise to the occasion and, and like meet a standard that we weren't necessarily living at beforehand. You know totally. what I mean? And we've kind of had to do it in front of everybody. Yeah. yeah. And it's beautiful because we're growing with all of our followers. Yeah, so cool. we're all coming up together and we're like, we're learning like they're learning. Yeah. So it's, it's really cool. And that's the thing that I've seen, like I've never gotten the like impression that you guys are like coming on to like act like, you know, everything. Oh, no. Or like coming on to act like, hey, we have all the answers. Yeah. It almost feels like you're coming on to be like, hey, this is what Holy Spirit was teaching me this morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Let's> work <laughs> <through it> together. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> and like, let me like show you guys right now because I'm learning that too. Yeah. And I yeah. think that there's like this authenticity and this genuineness that like people crave in this generation that they g are getting from you guys because you guys are just like, hey, I just love Jesus. And I'm letting him transform my life it, before your very eyes. Like, yeah. what's my testimony? This is my testimony. Yeah. And I'm letting God, like, work in my life. And it's it's powerful. It really is. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of the time when it comes to Christianity, people can't always relate to Christians. And they can't relate to people when they're talking about Jesus because it's just, it's so foreign to them. Yeah. And I think that God, I mean, first of all, we're, it's almost like we're like discovering Jesus in real time in front of people. And that's why like people feel that and they can see that it's, totally. it's apparent and it's obvious. And then at the same time, we're able to reach a certain type of people that might not necessarily ever even hear the name Jesus. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah, I think that's why God chose us in this situation because we are just like a lot of other people who are just trying to figure it out. We're certainly not perfect. Yeah. We are learning as we go and totally. and just trying to live for God. Yeah, I think there's so many people who are so scared to come to religion because they feel judged. Yeah. Because yeah. there is a side of Christianity that is very judgmental. For sure. And yeah. if I'm if I'm honest, I was scared to come to, wow. <laughs> to Christianity because of that reason, because I am far from perfect. Yeah. So I think it it makes people feel comforted that we didn't have perfect lives. We've messed up, you know, totally. and got had to fall and get back up. So yeah. It's pretty cool. It's yeah. the testimony of like how God works. Yeah. And that's yes. like so special just to see what he's doing. What's changed? I, we're going to talk about like mental health today mm -hmm. and kind of like how Holy Spirit can renew your mind. But I have so many other questions. Yeah. Like yeah. what's the thing that's changed the most in the last six months for you guys? Like personally, like what are you seeing God do as this thing 
it's like you guys were just saying before we were rolling, which we were sort of rolling, which might make the show, which might not. <laughs> but you guys were saying like, we didn't sit down to like start a podcast. We sat down to like, just talk about Jesus. Yeah. So what's changed the most in the last six months in your guys' life uh, that you see how you've seen him move? Um, well, what's changed for me in my personal life, I'll start with that, is that I had to really change the way I was living. Wow. Um, I didn't know better, obviously. Yeah. I, I found God a year ago. Year, <laughs> it's so yeah, crazy. a year ago. Yeah. And so there were I had to make a lot of changes in my life. I have a lot of people that look up to us and yeah. so and it's been the hardest thing, but mm -hmm. the most rewarding thing. Totally. And every day Angela and I are both learning how to how to live right and how to be o obedient to yeah. God. And um so that personally I think that's what we've had to do. We've had to make a lot of changes in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I feel if one thing that I want to say about Ari and I've said it about her before is that even though she's only been saved technically for a year, I have never met somebody who's more sensitive and responsive to the call of God, That's a so call cool. from God. Yeah. Like, truly, it's been a year and she just will like lay things down like it's nothing. She hears God and she obeys. Let's it's, go. It's incredible. That's like, huge. And she's even and I'm like, I was like way further along in my walk and she's coming to me and she's sharpening <laughs> me and I'm like, hang on. Here you go. <laughs> hey, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But she's yeah. really, it's its incredible to watch and it's inspired me so much in my life and my walk with Jesus. Um, for me, I think I, because I've been doing this with God for, for a few years and I've known Jesus personally and intimately for a little while. Um, and there was a lot of things in scripture that I, I, I knew, but I didn't know. And yeah. I, I, kn I did not yet have the revelation of why these things were wrong. So I was living in certain ways and thinking things are okay or knowing that they're not, but being like, Jesus loves me <laughs> yeah, anyways. Yeah, yeah. You the know what I mean? The scapegoat card, yeah, yeah, Jesus loves me. <laughs> and honestly, like God used this podcast because I could no longer live in certain ways that I was living because yeah. I the feeling of being a hypocrite literally was eating at my soul. Like I <laughs> yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I could not get on there and, and, and preach the, the Bible and then go and like live a certain way or totally. even the way that I was talking, the way that I was dressing. There has been, we talked about, we did an episode today on baptisms and, we were talking about like having God doing a baptism of fire and how he will like take you through the fire yep. and he'll turn up the heat and mm -hmm. he will burn things off and yep. burn things out of you. And like I've had a year of being in the fire and I'm like so grateful that he's turned up the heat the way he has. And totally. while it's not easy to be held to a higher standard, it's I it's worth it, obviously. Yeah. And so it's just been like an incredible pruning process and yeah there's been a lot the way i dress the way i talk honestly one so of the proud of you the one of the reasons why i because i love jesus for a long time and i was yeah. like crazy i was the weird jesus girl for a long time i'm at parties asking people if they want to accept <laughs> jesus like very like it's <laughs> just that's awesome actually. like honestly like i didn't care where i was don't like, go to parties and do that but that's fine yeah. <laughs> um but i for a long time i was like i could feel god calling me to like go and speak and talk about him and make videos and do go on tiktok and i'm like absolutely not like yeah. i don't want to be a role model i'm not interested i don't want to change the way i talk and the way i dress and the way that i act like i want to i want to love you and then i want to live be angela yeah i want to love you and these things that exactly. i keep from you yeah. yeah and then it's just one by one he has given me so the conviction has been so heavy in mm -hmm. the best way possible that he just he loves me so much he won't let me live a certain way absolutely <laughs> i'm thinking about <laughs> You should have seen us with our Instagrams. We were so angry at first because I always was under the impression that I was really classy on Instagram. Like <laughs> I thought I was Princess Diana on there. I was like, what? I Princess get to delete Diana. this? I'm like, I'm classy with my little floral dresses. Oh, no, no. These Christians <laughs> woke us up real quick. Well, you did know, you guys catch a lot of like flack or a lot of like... Did we? Did you? We Do you? <laughs> Not anymore. Oh, no. Because you cleaned it up. Because that once they hear us, they know they see yeah, our, our realness totally. and our love for Jesus and how we're learning and growing yeah a lot of the listen a lot of the criticism that we got to begin with and it was only in the beginning was it a was lot deserved. of it was deserved yeah. now we're all we're <laughs> all the comments we were getting kind and righteous and like good so tough and, and inspiring to comments are so scary <laughs>
Oh man, they were they were rough. I mean, we've talked about it before where I like I really struggled for a second and I questioned everything about myself, my faith and wow. who Jesus is. It was really scary. It was That's like sad. it was a few it was only a few days. I'm a tough girl. Like I get up <laughs> quick. But I was like truly questioning my life and I'm like, who maybe they're right. Like maybe I'm I don't know. You know what I mean? Just wow. thinking a lot of but we did decide like if we're gonna do this, we're gonna rise to the occasion and, and clean things up and, and act not just for the people who are commenting, but for the people who are looking to us for help and for guidance yeah. and for the Lord himself, totally. you know? Yeah, we're like who we are on that podcast, we need to be behind closed doors. Even yeah. more so. Yes, oh, probably. Abs- absolutely. Like who, who you are behind closed doors needs to be probably 10 times what you are on your absolutely. platform. Absolutely. Because the opposite, the inverse will crush you. Absolutely. Will absolutely yeah. crush you. Yeah, and we when we started when it was only like a couple it was really not that long that we got a lot of bad comments, but on the YouTube and like the Spotify and everything, anyone who actually takes the time to watch our episodes, we don't even get one negative no, comment on yeah. YouTube. It's insane. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. now, I don't know. It's always going to be the internet trolls that don't understand or don't have any context of what right. you're doing or saying or want to take snap judgments. And that's exactly. typical, but mm-hmm. that's crazy to hear. Yeah. That like the podcast almost created like accountability. Oh, yeah. For you guys to have to be like, oh, wait, like, I'm like, just like, preaching things I believe, but I'm not living things I believe. Yeah. And that's like a, that's a very like humbling, like, oh shoot. The thing is, the thing is we would never preach anything that we weren't living by. So that's the thing. Yeah. We were preaching things that were authentic to us, but there was things that we couldn't talk about. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? We had to stay away from a couple of things. Yeah. Yeah. We never went on there and said, Hey, don't do this. And we left and did it. We just were like, what? We're not touching that. (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? You guys go. Exactly. We'll get back to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool, though. It's cool to hear. And what a hum, like, it's so humble of you guys to like. I didn't expect you guys to say that, but it's like so humble of you guys to be like, "This is what God's done the last six months." Like He's pruned and He's put Mm. us in process, and it's interesting because I think there's something powerful about that, especially like your story being only only saved a year. But like, so many people think that they need to be perfect for God to start to yeah. use them. Mm-mm. It's the exact opposite. And they think, exactly, and they think, okay, I have to have everything together. I have to be perfect. I have to be living perfectly righteous. There has to, can be no sin in my life. There can be none of these things before God can ever accept me, one, and then two, he can ever use me. Mm-hmm. And that's not true. Like, it's not biblical. You see God use people all the time that were overlooked, outcasted, stuck in sin, and God came to them and he said, hey, listen, 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 mm. I have something for your life. And um, if you just stay really close to me, mm. I'm going to do something crazy in your life. But in the meantime, I'm just going to start to peel things and pull things out of you until in about a year, you're going to look back and go, oh, I didn't even realize. OK, cool. And we're going to keep going forward because yeah. I don't think he's looking for I don't think he's looking for perfect people. I think he's looking for people with a passion to tell people about Jesus. And that's what you guys had. You had a passion to tell people about Jesus. Yeah. You sat down. Did you have stuff to iron out? Yeah. Do we all have stuff to iron out? Yeah. Mm. But you said, I'm going to tell people about Jesus. Yeah. And God oh, like honored the obedience and the sacrifice. And look at the last six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pruned, grown, strengthened, and then opportunities out the wazoo. Yeah. 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 So it's so cool, guys. It's so true. I, I... Yeah, I'm I'm so grateful that he does use he can truly use anybody. And that's our whole point in starting Girls Gone Bible, because like I said earlier, we would never go up and pretend to be something that we weren't like truly since our first video, which is our testimony video, which is a. Like, oh, I, I, I wish I could delete it. I Are we gonna have to run that back? We were amazing. <laughs> no, I don't even. You know. did amazing. I was hey like, guys, we're gonna, link, we're gonna link that below. <laughs> <No. You> can- <laughs> but like, honestly, from the very beginning, like people, someone asked us one time. They were like, "What would you guys do if like your past came out or something like that?" And I was like, "What do you mean? Like, it all we came told out. everybody everything. <laughs> we told on ourselves. Yeah, you can't. Like, so from the very beginning, we don't have." I don't know. I think that's why we're able to have like no shame and we're able to like live in humility because we're so open about and we're we didn't grow up in a church like that where we had to have this perfect reputation like we are who we are. And the truth is that most people are like us. 
and the people who have been obedient to God their whole lives and have had a perfect past and and have never gone through anything or never messed up or never strayed away that is so beautiful and yeah. I'm so proud of every person like that totally that's not most people's story yeah. mm -hmm. and so I want those people to understand Jesus is waiting with open arms come through like totally. he's waiting for you and it's okay no matter how dirty no matter how sinful no matter what even if you're in the middle of sin right now in this moment he's still there knocking and waiting for come you on. That's yeah. right. you know That's it's right. so good oh. Love you. So good. I, I think God's doing something really special yeah. right now with like, you're preaching, by the way. That's crazy. Um, God's doing something really special in people right now. And I've noticed bringing people on this podcast and then meeting people that like God's doing something crazy in their life right now. He's like raising up people who did not grow up typical. Mm -hmm. Like he's 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 raising up these communicators and these influencers and these these writers and these speakers and he's and these podcasters that didn't have a perfect life that mm -hmm. didn't necessarily grow up in church that parents weren't pastors like and he's doing something unique in those people because I think he's he wants to reach a full generation of people that are growing up that exact same way. He does. Because mm. we're growing up in an extremely pa like post Christian mm. America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like most people don't even consider God ever. Mm. Mm. They're not thinking about God. They're not thinking about eternity. They're not thinking about anything other than like maybe a manifestation or like anything like that. And yeah. so now he's raising up people that know what that's like and can go like, hey, I know how to meet you. Mm -hmm. I know how to speak to you. Like I know I can't come at you in Christianese. Mm -hmm. I got to meet you where you're at, but it's okay because I was just there. Like I know yeah. exactly how to talk to you now because that was me. Yeah. And I love that because I think that's part of my story. I think like for a while I grew up like when I had an encounter with the Lord when I was 18 and knew that the Lord was calling me to do some sort of ministry with my life. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what that looked like. My dad was a fire chief. Mm -hmm. My mom was a stay-at-home mom and then later a teacher. I didn't grow up in like a context of like what is a pastor or like a speaker or mm -hmm. like a kid. Like what does that look like? And I had no idea. But I think God is doing something really special in those people because he's going like, hey, you don't have to fit a box. You don't yeah. have to fit a mold. You don't have to like be what's happened in the past. We need new people. Mm -hmm. We need Angela's and Ari's. We don't need more perfect image pastors. We need these people. Right. And I think it's really special. Thank so I just you. want to honor you guys for just growing in front of everybody's eyes and just chasing Jesus. It's really cool. No. When did you launch the pod? Six months Six ago. Six months ago. So like, when was that? Like, May. May. Mm -hmm. May mm -hmm. was our first episode. And wow. at first we were just doing once, uh, twice a month. We actually did it for fun. We didn't know no. that. We didn't even know. Like, we didn't plan on doing a podcast. No intention of it. Like, No, we just this. wanted to put something on film because we had been, like, ministering girls around us. And we were like, let's get, let's just try it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we just, we wanted to That's talk crazy. about Jesus. That's it. We had, <laughs> That's no, we had idea no idea anybody was going to listen. When God wants you to do something, he'll make it happen. You had happen. no idea it would like blow up like this? No. I, we didn't even call, know that we were filming a podcast. You no. just sat down to talk about we, Jesus? Yeah. I actually, so I thought we were going to put it on YouTube and just like maybe our friends would watch it. I'm truly not even kidding. Ari had like 200,000 followers at the time. I had like 60,000, like nothing. And I was just like, I want the people who follow me to see this and to yeah. like no like you have to pray and spiritual warfare is a thing that's why you have anxiety you yeah, know what i yeah. mean that's why we're so passionate about mental health totally yeah. you know because it's just something that we saw around us yeah yeah so then you did and the i, podcast I and was blew yeah i i was so new into my faith that after i watched the first episode i was like i'm not equipped for this so how long <laughs> have you been a believer and then how long have you been a believer I, go ahead yeah i i was um i grew up catholic and i grew up like loving jesus and believing in jesus going to church my whole life but okay. then um we'll probably talk about it i got sober when i was 23 okay and i feel like that's when i say i got saved like that's when i was saved mm -hmm. because that's when i started jesus started to pursue me so hard and he and i kind of entered into like an intimate relationship yeah. but then when i started reading the bible when i was 25 which is only like three years ago yeah that's when my that's oh, when yeah. like i laid my life down and totally. i you know what i mean yeah yeah so you grew up catholic yeah what would you consider yourself now so we <laughs> we got baptized last week actually let's the, go yeah, yeah. I, you know we were baptized as babies yeah, yeah, yeah and then we were so like we are ride or die for our catholic so roots bath, you got baptized catholic again no, we got baptized as Christians. Like oh, cool. We got baptized. You know what That's I mean? Crazy. Like yeah, we, yeah. yeah, we did. We got baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we just like, 
I don't know what to call us because I'm gonna go to mass tomorrow yeah. at twelve. Like, <laughs> That's crazy. I, you know, so I, what church is what church do you guys go to? Like Christian, Christian church? church? Yeah. Vintage. Okay, vintage. Yeah. And mosaic. But then and you mosaic. also will go to like Catholic mass. I go to church three times a week. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, we no, really, you don't. We, we, I swear <laughs> on my life. Yeah, we go to uh, church in the morning and then we'll go to mass at five p.m. on Sundays. No, I've only been to one Catholic mass my whole life. I love it. I feel the presence of Jesus so much in the Catholic churches. I grew up like a Christian household, non-denominational. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like uh, it in like a church that started small, but then boomed into like a mega church. Mm. So it's just very different for me because like, and then my family, my mom's super charismatic. So I grew up like almost as opposite to Catholic as you can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was grew up super charismatic. So then when I went to like a Catholic mass, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know really what's happening right it's now. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird if you don't understand. Yeah, totally. I don't know what it is about that. I lo- I, did I you followed- grow up Catholic? I did, yeah. I mean, I didn't grow up. Um, I don't know. I, I grew up Catholic. I went to Catholic school, but I didn't really have faith in my, my household. Yeah. You know, I really had to find God on my own, but I actually found God in a Catholic church. Yeah. I love the Catholic church. It's really hard for me, but I will say that when I got baptized, I felt like a brand new person. I feel like a brand new person. Wow. It's really, I had a very supernatural experience. It was beautiful. I had a a very like service level, like understanding, I guess, of like Catholics growing up. You kind of like, you like growing up, you go like, oh, the Catholics are just like the religious people doing the religious stuff, right? And my mom had a uh, one of like the ladies that was kind of like an aunt in her life, like was my grandma's best friend, was a like like spirit filled, charismatic Catholic, and like that completely changed my whole way I thought about like Catholics. Yeah, I my mom. So my mom is like a devout Catholic. Mm-hmm. She loves the Catholic Church. Yeah. She she's very much like I. I even mentioned to her recently <laughs> that she should get baptized, and it was it. Did, you know, it, <laughs> it didn't, didn't go, go over she's well. Like I love Saint Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and she is like. But she, I, I watched my mom. She's very Catholic, but she's not legalistic at all. And she's cool. extremely spirit-filled yeah. and very relationship with Jesus oriented. Yeah. So that's how I grew up. Um, but I do understand, like I have now, it's I'm in a weird place because I love the Catholic Church. Yeah. I love going to Mass. I that's love special. the fact that we stand, we have to stand and then sit and then <laughs> kneel. Yeah, yeah. I enjoy I was gonna say that too. so much of this. It, I know, but it feels really... I feel very involved in what we're doing there, yeah. and I love saying the prayers all together Same. as as a church. There are things about it, like the relationship with Mary, like the relationship with the saints, and even recently, I I was like, it came to me that I, I was like, it says in scripture, like you shall not call any earthly any earthly person your father except yeah. for me, your father in heaven. And I was just like thinking about the priest. You know what I mean? Totally. And so there's a lot to it. And mm. me and God are we're figuring it out as we <laughs> yeah, go. Yeah. You know? There's doctrinal differences. Yeah. There yeah. Is. You'll figure it out. I think you stay close to Jesus, it's like whatever. That's all that yeah, matters. Yeah. Literally, so right about like that. whatever. Yeah. Like that's my whole bit my whole thing. Like Yona, uh, you guys probably know nothing about Yona, but it's a unity and evangelism movement. And the whole wow. idea is to we put on events for young adults eighteen to thirty five to encounter the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And we try and unite the church, get them plugged back into the local church. But we don't care what denomination you're from. We don't care your background. We don't care uh, what you believe. We don't care where you grew up, how you grew up, if you hate Jesus, if you love Jesus. We we do not care. I want you in the room. Mm -hmm. I want you to encounter Jesus. And I'm not preaching doctrine to you. I'm preaching Jesus. Mm -hmm. So come receive the gospel Mm -hmm. and then go get plugged into a church and hopefully you find community and We'll work the other things out. Yeah. Mm. But like meet Jesus, please. And your life will transform. So I, I say it all the time. I'm like, because people are like, are you Catholic? Are you Christian? Because you bo- go to all, every single church. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm a follower of Jesus. Yeah, it's fire. If they're teaching cool. from the Bible, that's I'm right. there. I don't care as long mm-hmm. as it's the Bible. Yeah. That's all that matters. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about mental health. Yeah. Talk I'm excited to talk about it. When I text Ari, I was like, hey, what do you want to talk about? She's, like, golf. I think we, I think <laughs> yeah. She's like, I think we want to talk about mental health. And I was like, great, because yeah. I'm super passionate about the renewal of the mind. Yeah. Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Mm-hmm. Change my life. Yeah. Change my life. So I'm just excited to hear, like, why are you guys passionate about this? Like, maybe tell me a bit about your guys' story with struggling with maybe anxiety, depression, whatever it may mm. be. I just kind of want to hear like what God brought you guys through and why you guys are passionate about it. Go ahead. You go first. 
yeah, this is our number one favorite topic. I mean, we, Ari and I have both, this is why we started our podcast. This is why we both got into um, a relationship with Jesus is because we are both struggling with our mental health and we are surrounded by people who struggle with their mental health. And I don't know if I even have one friend that doesn't struggle sometimes severely with their mental health. I don't know anybody that doesn't. It is plaguing yeah. our world. It's, yeah. This generation is plagued by it. Yeah. Plagued. And I am, we're just so passionate about it because we know the, the authority that we have through Jesus. Come and on. that's what we're so p- passionate about. And like for me, I came up through this. I, I mentioned it earlier that I, my big come to Jesus moment was when I, I quit drinking in 2019 after what, like maybe 10 years almost of drinking and just like, um, just doing honestly what everybody else was doing. And you talked about it a little bit, how we live in a world where, where there's no God and, you know, having a relationship with Jesus is so countercultural because all anybody wants to do is party, have fun, yeah. do whatever they want. Yeah. You know what I mean? No live accountability. Yeah, live yeah. their truth. My <laughs> yeah. tr- like, oh, that, don't get me started what that on mean? my. What does that mean? It's, do you do understand that my truth? Like, it, it's it's, it's a so. Lie. Everyone is allowed to have their own truth, even if it's delusional and not based in reality. I know. But I just struck a chord. Come on. No, it does. <laughs> no, go. because it's ridiculous. You, well, because and you're you're OK. So you're they really push this, like, have your truth, like live your truth. But your truth is only valid if it aligns with like absolutely what everybody's truth exactly yes. or what is allowed uh-huh, in society. Uh-huh. And so it's like it's, absolutely it's just so hypocritical and it doesn't actually make any sense. No, it doesn't. Um, but Sorry, I got a little fired up. <laughs> got a little <laughs> passionate over here. It, well, yeah, because I'm. I think that's uh, that's another reason why we do this is because we honestly, we want to use the voice that we have to speak truth into these situations. And society pushes so many things on us that aren't good for us. That aren't true. That aren't true. And the idea of living your truth pushes the idea that you're your own god. Yes. Because mm. if you can live your truth, it's whatever you make up. Exactly. And if you can live up to whatever you make up, you're god. Yeah. And no one wants to live up to the truth because they didn't set it, and that means there's a God. That's mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. I'll talk about it too, we'll, but continue your story. Oh, yeah. Sorry. We'll, we'll get into <laughs> yeah, no, I, yeah. I, I, 30 things just yeah, went through my yeah. mind. But I, and so I struggled severely. So one of the reasons why I had to stop drinking is because I had started, when I got into my 20s, I started having extreme anxiety and then I started having panic attacks. And I mean, it's, I was suffering so severely with this stuff that I was self-medicating with alcohol because I didn't know any better. I didn't know that I could pray about it. I didn't know that I could fill my mind with scripture to combat the, the, the stuff that was happening. Um, so I started self-medicating with alcohol and I um, developed a relationship with this pastor back home in Florida that my mom was friends with and between him and my mom praying for me and then I started praying for myself and that's why it's so important to have people pray for you totally. and praying over you. I, by the grace of God, the strength of God, I quit drinking in 2019. Come on. But for the next year, still suffered severely with anxiety and with panic attacks. Wow. And so that's just a testament that, you know, things don't happen overnight. And God does have the ability to heal you overnight. But he oftentimes doesn't because we still have to deal with the consequences of our actions. Totally. And you know what I mean? And so I had to deal with the consequences of what I had done to my body, kind of. And so through prayer, I started to develop so much boldness within myself and so much confidence and I started to heal day by day from this anxiety and then when I started reading the Bible it was game over I realized I I learned what authority was I realized that we have authority through Jesus over serpents snakes all this stuff every demon every I learned about demonic oppression and that spiritual warfare and everything that I was experiencing while it was psychological it was also spiritual come on and that changed my life. And that's why I'm so passionate about it, because I am so tired of seeing people living as slaves to Come their on. minds yep. when we're supposed to be the ruler of our mind. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. I, f- I think that um, so much of living in like freedom and fullness with Jesus is in the mind. Yeah. So much of it is like operating out of the mind of Christ, living yeah. with a renewed mind. And so much of it comes down to what you're thinking, what you're filled with. Mm-hmm. And I think. The enemy knows that. That's why he's attacking a whole generation of people in their minds Mm -hmm. because he's going, oh, if they can catch this revelation, it's for sure over for me. Yeah. And if they can catch this revelation, I 
I can't make them self-destruct. Yeah. Because anytime I try, they just combat me with the word of God or they just ask to Holy Spirit, renew my mind. Let mm -hmm. me think as you think. Mm -hmm. And it's over. And mm -hmm. so I'm passionate about that too. Sorry, go ahead. You share your story so now beautiful. too. No, I mean, same as Angela. I, I spent most of my life just completely depending on myself. And I struggled. I, I didn't grow up in a family of faith. I grew up in, around mental, a lot of mental health. My family ha had a lot of mental health issues. And so that's what I watched my whole life. I was in constant um, fight or flight. Um, I suffered severely, uh, panic attacks, anxiety, and I didn't have God. Yeah. And um, I, I put all of my identity into uh, my self-image, my career. What are people going to think about me? Men, relationships, which uh, left me feeling completely broken. Yeah. And so um, I just kept uh, repeating the same cycle until I got really, really sick. And my heart was sick. I was so broken down emotionally that it felt so physical. I literally thought I was going to die. Wow. And, um, you know, God will do that sometimes. And he's so compassionate. He doesn't want to he doesn't want to hurt you. He he needs you to break you down to that point. So you can know that he's the only one that you need. Mm. And that's what he did for me. Yeah. And um, I found him a year ago. Um, I was in a church and I just, I was so alone. Like I felt so alone. Nothing cured me. No pill could cure me. My parents couldn't cure me. No therapist <laughs> could cure me. No uh, new age book. I tried to go to that as yeah, well. That come couldn't on, crystals. cure me. <laughs> come, on, come on, crystals. I didn't do the crystals, <laughs> but I did do the Eckhart Tolle books. Um, but yeah, I found him in a church. I was by myself, talked to him for hours. I had a supernatural experience. Um, I had just cried out to him and I felt so comforted in that moment. And the pain didn't go away, but I felt like I could hear his voice so clearly being like, I need you to know me mm. before I can tell you what's really going on in your life. Wow. Mm. And um, so I... After, shortly after that, I met her, and I, I always say this, she was like my earth angel. Come on. When she came into my life, she truly um, cured me. Like, he, God sent her to me as wow. my angel to cure me. It makes me want to cry when I think about it. Um, <laughs> but w when Angela came into my life, she introduced me to the Bible, and that's when my life really changed. Because yeah. most of my life, I thought, all of those negative thoughts about myself were real and mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. And the the truth is, is depression, anxiety, fear. That's not the truth. Yeah, come mm -hmm. on. And the biggest tactic of the enemy is he'll make he'll make his thoughts your own. And I was in bondage of my thoughts. Wow. In bondage. And when I started reading the word and seeing the truth, I was free. And the the story about Ma Mary Magdalene that was one of the first stories I read and just how she was just in prison in her head and just she was suffering so bad and she couldn't get out of it and God put his hands on her and healed her and I related her to her so much and I don't know after I read that story I'll never forget it I'll never forget saying to Angela I was like do you think Jesus will heal me like wow. he did Mary Magdalene and she said yes he will and um yeah that was the journey for me and my healing and my anxiety and I will tell you I always thought I was like it's only going to get worse from here yeah like mm -hmm. I grew up with mental illness in my family like how am I ever going to get better wow how 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 will I get better like I'm so sick and I will tell you that it's been a journey that I'm still on but he has done miraculous things in me I have a peace in my heart that is so undescribable that is only from him wow. and um I he's a healer and he will heal you. He yeah. will. If yeah. you it says if you, you seek me and you will find me. Yeah. Come and on. that is the truth. Amen. You seek him and you he he and he's waiting for you and the thing about Jesus is, is he's not he's he's not going to to you know you you have to really seek him to build a relationship yeah. with him. He's yeah. not going to put anything on you. You totally. have to seek him. But he's right there waiting for you when you're ready. He's way yeah. closer than you think. Yes. Yeah. That's so special, guys. I'm grateful for you guys' story. Very yeah. similar to mine in in some ways. 
I feel like mine was pretty self inflicted, if I'm gonna be honest. Oh, but so I, was mine. Yeah, but I was, you know, I was um, my whole life. Um, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share this. Listeners kind of already know this, but I'm gonna yeah. share this just for kind of like what I want to ask next. But my whole life, I was. Um, I played tennis, and my whole life, I thought that I was gonna be like a professional tennis player or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I was 18 years old, I ended up getting injured, couldn't play tennis anymore, lost my tennis scholarship, and then I ended up having an encounter with the Lord that, like, I still to this day can't can't put words to. And that day, the Lord revealed what the calling of my life was. Mm -hmm. And I started going after God intimately in that way. Like, I knew who God was before then because I grew up in a Christian household, but I didn't have a relationship with him. And so for about a year, I was like, okay, I'm going to chase Jesus. And then I ended up getting in a relationship Mm -hmm. that started pulling me the other direction. Got a little bit distracted, Mm -hmm. got in this social media thing, and that started doing well. And I made the assumption that, like, because one thing was was succeeding, that means God's hand was on it. Mm. But the further I got away from what God had called me to do, and the closer I got to this other thing, the more anxious I had become. Mm. Like, I'm not, I'm super outgoing. I love meeting new people. I was so socially anxious that I couldn't, I could barely be at Thanksgiving with my family. Mm -hmm. I thought I was going to explode. And, like, I even got this peace tattoo when I was, like, 18 or 19 because I was like oh I'm so I'm so anxious like maybe if I get this peace tattoo like maybe then I'll like remind myself that like God is peace and I'll be good didn't help because what happened in my life is I got distracted and I was outside the will of God Mm -hmm. and the intimacy with Jesus had ceased Mm. and for me I feel like we're so similar in all of our stories is when you're out of the will of God when you're away from Jesus when your back is turned your ears are pointed at something else, and that's when lies can come, distraction can come. Mm-hmm. You can start to deal with these anxious thoughts, these anxious moments. You can start to doubt yourself, hate yourself. You can be depressed, lonely, sad. You can be experiencing all these things that is not in the will of God mm-hmm. simply because you're not in the will of God. Yeah. Exactly. And so I just kind of want to ask you guys, both of you guys said, as soon as I learned how to fill my mind, with scripture Mm -hmm. i was able to combat that what does that look like for listeners that are going yeah like let me say it this way how do we tell them you can be healed you can fill your mind your mind can be renewed because you're looking at three people that it happened Mm -hmm. and not sound like the people that are like hey you're not praying enough yeah because i'm like hot take you're probably not (laughs) yeah you know what i mean like and i don't want to be insensitive i don't want to be the guy that's like oh it's not this but like I can guarantee you if you press in, the Lord will heal you. Absolutely. It might take some time, yeah. but if you press in deeper and press in deeper and press in deeper, you're going to reach the point where God wanted you to be the whole time and you're going to experience freedom. Mm-hmm. So what are some tips or what did you guys do in your life that it practically listeners can do that are experiencing walking in the same things that we've walked in? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the thing with this uh, is we can come at it from so many different angles and there's so many contributing factors to why, because the truth is just because you're close to Jesus does not mean that you won't struggle. Yeah. Like I want people to understand that being close to Jesus oftentimes isn't a feeling like he scripture tells us that like our heart is deceitful and that's why we can't listen to our feelings. And oftentimes for me, I know I could be so, I could be filled with the Holy spirit and, and I will get these feelings of, Oh gosh, am I not, what am I doing? wrong am I not near him is he not near me because I don't feel but my feelings actually literally mean nothing the scripture says that nothing in all creation can separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus so like understand that just because you are feeling negative things does not mean that you're not close to Jesus and you might still be depressed and you might still be anxious but let's go over some of the practical things that you can do I know when before I started reading the Bible, I used to meditate, right? I would put on like guided meditations where I wasn't ever like about the manifesting stuff, mm-hmm. but I was about the meditation. I would sit in silence, empty my mind. And what's funny about new age like meditation and worldly meditation is that they say empty your mind to find peace, whereas biblical meditation is fill your mind with scripture wow, to word. find peace. And so for me, you got to get your daily reading in. You give God the first fruits of your day. Yeah. You read the Bible before you do anything else. Our days 
it is so incredible the way that your entire day will somehow <laughs> just fall right into place. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, oh, but I have to get up and get ready to go to work. I don't have enough time. But for some reason, if you give God that time, he will figure it out for you. Totally. That's you know? the truth. <laughs> so I, just reading, being in the word, reading, because every negative thought that you have, there is something in scripture that will combat that and tell you the truth about it. Totally. If, if, if you know, you're having thoughts saying that I'm lonely and I'm abandoned. God says that I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. If it says that I am worthless, God says I knit you together in your mother's womb. I know how many hairs are on your head. I love you so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's always something in scripture to combat the anxious thoughts that we're having. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that you say that, that, you know, because some people are like, well, I'm, I have God, but I'm still depressed. Yes. But you have no idea. Like I was just in a storm recently, but the way I deal with it now mm -hmm. is completely different. Yeah. It doesn't say that we're not going to still go through things. I go through things daily. Yep. I'm like always in a storm in some form. <laughs> I mean, we're all getting... Sounds like yesterday you guys were both in a storm together. <laughs> but, we worked it out. Oh, absolutely. But yeah. he gives you the gift of cope when you stay near him. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's the same thing. I... Even if I'm tired, I'm making a point to get up in the morning. I read the Bible. When I'm in the car, listen to your worship. Yeah. I make it, a, we, we, we never miss church. Yeah. Um, and we, yeah, we go three times every Sunday. <laughs> we're, we're, That's crazy. We're, we are Jesus <laughs> I'm <freaks>. too ADD. <laughs> but we love it. it. It's I, crazy. We're, we are on, but I, I just know what my life was like when I didn't have all this mm -hmm. and it was dark. Yeah. Yeah. It was dark. When I think about how I was living before I had Jesus, I'm like, how did I get through my days? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so when you're filling your mind with, with Jesus every single day, when you're reading scripture and you're, and you're listening to worship and you have the armor of God on every day, he's going to get you through. And even if you're in a storm, it's going to be a lot easier to get through it. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. yeah. I think about the story of Peter walking on water and how it happened, the miracle happened out of the disciples being in the middle of a storm. Mm. And my favorite thing is when Peter was walking on water, like in the middle of the miracle, he was, the storm was still happening. Yeah. And the, the storm... <laughs> <laughs> just, stop. No, stop. Just, stop. no, I'm sorry. Honestly. We do this sometimes. You just I'm, spilled. No, too. no, I didn't. I'm Did I? Oh, wait, no, I'm. I'm sorry. Keep going because I will tell you the story after. One time, Ari, I'm gonna tell you right now. Okay, One time, okay. Ari was on the podcast and she was telling the story about Peter walking on water, but then also was talking about how Jesus was asleep on the pillow. So we always laugh because you mix up. The, I'm so sorry. You Keep go, going, dude. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I guess those stories both hey, happened. I didn't say I was a Bible scholar. Not at the same time, I'm but so they sorry, both Peter. happened. So you're good. So I think I was saying, um, anyway, the, he's, he's, the miracle happens while he's walking on water yeah. in the middle of a storm. Mm -hmm. And the storm only stops once Peter touches Jesus' hand. Mm -hmm. That's the only time that the storm stops is when Jesus pulls Peter up out of the water. Yeah. And then he says to the wind and the waves, be still mm. and it's still but what's interesting about that is peter is on a boat storm mm. peter's walking on water in the middle of a miracle storm mm. so you could say he's he's being prepared for a miracle storm he's in the middle of a miracle storm he's blowing everybody's mind still in a storm then he falls still in a storm but the only time that something ever can change in that story is when he's touching jesus mm -hmm. yeah and I think that's the same as our lives. Like things in our lives can be going well. Like things can be happening. You can be in the middle of a miracle. You could be walking on water. You could be on your way to a destination that God is taking you towards. Things could be happening well. Success could be all around you. Yeah. But there could still be a storm brewing in your life because you haven't gotten close to Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said. Like it, it's not a perfect it's not a perfect life. It, it doesn't mean that like, hey, I'm close to Jesus and everything's good now mm -hmm. and I'm never going to struggle ever again and I'm just going to like ascend to heaven on the clouds. Mm -hmm. But it's like, hey, I'm close to Jesus and like you said, I now know where to go mm -hmm. when I start to sink yeah. and I, I know where to go. I know who can silence the wind and the waves. Mm -hmm. I know who can handle those things and it, I got to get close to him. Like yeah. I, I, I need, like I, you get to the point where you go, I, I need him. Uh -huh. Uh -huh.